So it's been a little over a week since I got the Sony a6700. I've made it an effort to use the camera every single day since getting it, and I thought it might be useful to go through all the photos and videos I took each day and recap what I've learned about the camera and my current thoughts on it. Day one was really all about using the camera intuitively. How far can I get before I needed to Google something? I just went through each menu item and changed whatever settings I thought I needed to. After a quick setup, I just got to shooting and tried to see what came out of it. I can't say the experience was all that intuitive, but I did appreciate the small form factor of this camera, especially with the 16 to 50 kit lens. And just a heads up, you're gonna hear that repeated throughout this video. This is a Mini 1000 uh, from 1977. I was kind of just like looking online for them. Like I was kind of doing my research. I saw a couple in person and like these typically just rust to hell. This one happened to be a barn find. It was apparently kept in a garage for 25 years. So it had like 36,000 miles on it. Basically original paint, original seats. I get collector plates on it. As soon as I got it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna upgrade the safety features because there's no airbags, there's no really anything. Basically before it's just drum brakes and like the thing wouldn't stop. Every little thing is just a cable. Like this cable is basically like a bike brake cable and that's the throttle. It's simple, there's no electronics, it's not hidden behind codes or anything. It's just, it's like. It's like a Leica. Yeah. Those are the wipers, holy. It's gassing up and then I like left it there and drove off. Oh so got, shit. got run over. When editing the footage, I began to become suspicious of the stabilization with this lens IS and IBIS combo. The movements just seemed a bit off, and I had to wonder if I really filmed it that terribly. Sure, I wasn't locked in since these were casual shots, but still, the footage seems to be jumping around and sticking at random points. I don't know. Suspicious of the stabilization. But the internal mic seems solid. So this day I shot some photo and video just very casually for my partner who is now getting into hair. I messed up exposure horribly because I didn't figure out how to properly separate photo and video settings and I also relied on the LCD screen for exposure. This is obviously not great practice but I got so used to doing it with the Leica SL2S and the Canon R6 Mark II, both of which have really solid LCD screens and pretty accurate depictions of what you're actually capturing. And actually the Leica SL2S just has a phenomenal EVF. That's even better. More on the exposure, the preview files on the actual camera screen itself, it looked very flat. It was like log footage, should have checked the metering. Very dumb, very amateur. Regardless, it was a good learning outcome. I immediately Googled how to separate photo and video settings. So we'll go through that on the screen here. Working with such horribly underexposed files though, I was really impressed by the shadow recovery. Autofocus was solid overall as well, so I did really feel like I was shooting blind at some points, just really relying on this quote unquote AI autofocus. And I thought I really needed to rely on that due to the lack of a joystick. I also didn't really like the quality of the 120 FPS, especially when the subject was hair. So moving forward for anything in slow motion, I'm probably just gonna be sticking with 4K 60. This day I used the camera in conjunction with my iPhone for a very specific client project that involves getting amateurish footage, just capturing general b-roll of various spots throughout this neighborhood. And as I warned you, the small compact form factor was great for this type of shooting, very discreet in nature, allowed me to just whip out this small little thing, grab a quick shot and just put it away. And also building off of what we learned in day 3, the 4K60, tried it out this day, solid. By day four, I began to feel really comfortable with this camera. Didn't really feel like I was fighting the camera anymore and diving into menus at every second. I still didn't really like the feel of the kit lens because of the power zoom function. I think I now understand why most compact lenses are primes. There's just something awkward ergonomically about having a zoom lens and zoom ring that's tiny. I took some clips throughout the day, but I would say the focus this day was on photos and I'm actually really happy with how they turned out. 
And as an aside, I think this is one of the reasons I picked up the 6700 over the FX30. I thought the 6700 would offer a slightly better photo taking experience. It has the burst mode, it has the mechanical shutter, it has the EVF, all of which I think contribute to a more pleasant photo taking experience. I did pick up the Sigma 18 to 50 the night before, so I wanted to get some test shots in, but didn't really get the chance to. In the very few clips that I did take, I wasn't impressed with the autofocus. It was actually off for both photo and video from what I recall, but I obviously needed to test it out a little bit more. So finally, this day, I got to test out the Sigma 18 to 50. I think the lens is an incredible value proposition and is very sharp, but to be very honest, I feel like it's overhyped. People were saying it's pretty much the same performance as the Sony 16-55, and I believed those comments because I don't have personal experience with the 16-55, but after using the 18-50, I highly doubt that comparison, or at least I hope that they're wrong because that would be very disappointing for the 16-55. The 18-50, in my opinion, lacks character like most modern lenses, nothing new there. But on top of that, the autofocus was underwhelming and the distortion at 18 was very noticeable. And after this day, and even today, I don't know if I want to keep the lens, to be quite honest. I'm not really wowed by it or super impressed by it, but it's also undeniable that it offers incredible value and it's so compact. By this point, I've become very accustomed to the camera. It feels no different from any other camera I've used, and I think it feels like a keeper. I haven't had any overheating issues, and it seems to be performing very solidly. It's also just growing on me the more I use it. Now, actually, on this day, I also got to finally test it at night and then also sunrise the next day. I just kind of threw it all into one day. Testing at night is definitely not an A7S III, uh, an FX3, or a Leica SL2S. But I mean, it's not fair to compare it to those. It still performed very well. For videos, you're not going to be able to shoot at insane ISOs, but it's still, again, just solid. And at sunrise, I got some of my favorite photos of the week. Very happy with the shots and the dynamic range. For both the night and the sunrise shots, I used the bracketing modes, and actually enabling that and using it was very intuitive. So in the eight days or whatever that I've used this camera, I think the best way to sum it up is learning curve. There's definitely this undeniable learning curve that I had to go through and still going through to really get the most out of this camera. A friend summed it up pretty well. Once you set it, you kind of forget it. And I think that's how I had approached all my previous Sony's. So I completely forgot all these settings and how to set this camera up. But as I figure them out one by one, such as separating photo and video settings, it becomes a non-issue. And it, the camera overall is very easy to use at this point, I think. At least all the major things that I care about things like exposure i think it's a lot easier now both photo and video switching between the two modes is actually very convenient and easy at this point but i think that does go to show that it's not an easy or intuitive system to get into when i picked up my leica sl2s and the canon r6 mark ii both cameras i don't have anymore i just played around with them for a couple months very easy to quickly learn how to use them and i don't know just very intuitive the menu systems were good the ergonomics were good the experience just made sense everything from top to bottom was just very easy to wrap my head around Sony's a little bit different. Does that make it a bad camera per se? I don't really think so. Because again, as you figure these things out one by one, and there's tons of resources out there, very well documented cameras, right? Things become easier, things become more comfortable. The rolling shutter, I didn't really even notice it, honestly, when I was taking videos this entire week. Such a small footprint, including the lens, the Sigma 18-50, to as much as I harp on it, I don't like it. It's so incredibly compact for what it is. I brought the Canon R6 Mark II and the RF 24-70 f2.8 around with me every day in Korea. I understand why some people really appreciate smaller cameras when traveling, but I feel like you're not really missing out much. Uh, you're not compromising that much with this smaller footprint. So much more comfortable to bring around as well seems like a win-win situation still get 4k on this thing 10 bit 422 i opted for the 6700 over the fx30 a to save money even with the sigma 18 to 50 not much more expensive than just the fx30 body alone b the photo capabilities it does feel a little bit more photo centric having that burst rate and continuous shooting i don't use it too often but sometimes maybe i will need it i haven't used it for any sort of gig work yet don't really have any immediate plans to either because gigs are kind of on the back burner but yeah i'm quite looking forward to getting more used to this camera I will say it's a camera that feels more like a tool 
Uh, I think I've maintained that pretty clearly about Sony cameras in general. It's hard to pinpoint why, but it's definitely a different feel than the Leicas that I've used. Um, some of the Fujis that I've used, I, I loved the X-Pro2, for example. It's closer to the Canon, uh, but it feels a little bit more tooly, a little bit more techy. How steep of a learning curve it was for me, I think it's just more testament to my old age at this point and how difficult it is for me to grasp new things. But I don't know, it doesn't inspire me to go out and shoot. However, it's convenience and it's really capable autofocus. It's surprisingly good color science and just the convenience of the small footprint helps me bring it out with this practical mindset for some reason. I did contemplate returning this a couple times, but after using it every day for these past whatever days, I think it's here to stay. So yeah, those are my initial thoughts. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If there are specific videos that you want to see regarding this camera, let me know. I'm going to try to get more use out of it before I try to put a review together. We'll see if we even get there. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for your time. Bye.